So we're moving on to chapter 11 now. I'm going to discuss fluid statics. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the course, fluid mechanics deals with both fluid statics and fluid dynamics. We're going to start with fluid statics, which means that we're going to be looking at fluids at rest. So really, the only stress that we're going to uh, be concerned with is the normal stress, which is pressure. And the pressure, as you can imagine, is going to vary with the depth or based on the weight of the fluid acting on a body. Now, most of our analyses for this chapter are going to deal with submerged bodies. So it could be a gate, a dam, uh, some type of liquid storage tank. Uh, I mean, so we're going to be looking at different things. So here's Hoover Dam. And we're going to be looking at maybe what's the hydrostatic forces acting on this. So can you imagine, you know, how tall this is? What are the forces acting on the bottom of this or, or where the uh, force is acting uh, based on the weight of that liquid? So there's a few ways we can do this analysis. What we are going to do pretty much for every problem is we'll assume that this atmospheric pressure acts on both sides of this dam, for example. So a lot of times we'll look at a gate or we'll look at a um, some type of wall. And we can a lot of times assume that atmospheric pressure acts on both this side of the wall and this side of the wall helping our analysis be a little bit simpler. If the atmospheric pressure does not act on one side of the wall, we do need to take it into account. So uh, one of the things here is determining, one, the magnitude of the pressure that we're interested in. How big is it? And a second concern is the location at which the pressure acts. So that location is going to be called the center of pressure. So uh, so this looks like a mess, okay, but it's not as bad as it seems. So first thing we're going to be interested in is finding what's the, called the resultant force, or that's the magnitude of the force that we're dealing with. And to find the magnitude of the force that we're dealing with, we're simply going to take our pressure, whatever initial pressure we have, and for the most part, this P naught is going to be zero. Remember, we discussed that earlier, where the uh, atmospheric pressure we're considering is zero, times rho g h sub c. And h sub c here is expressed as the distance from the surface of the water to the centroid of our shape. Okay, so here in this case our shape is some bean shape thing. And the centroid of this is right here. So the distance from right here to the surface of this water is going to be our y sub c. If we take y sub c times sine theta, it would be the same as h sub c, or the distance between the surface of the water and our centroid. Okay, so we're really interested in this distance, rho g h sub c. That's going to give us how much force is acting on our body. Now, the second question is, where does it act? And of course, to convert this pressure to a force, we multiply it by area. But our question is, uh, where does this act? At what point? Does it act at the centroid? Pretty close, but we're going to consider it to act just below the centroid, where we're going to call this the center of pressure. So the location of the center of pressure, once we know the magnitude, we, we find the location, which is called y sub p. If we know that, then we can design our gate, right? Because this is causing a moment to occur about some hinge, or this is causing some force to act across a certain distance. So we can design our gates we can design our system to be able to withstand this force that is being caused by this weight of the water on one side of it. Now this is the primary equation we'll be using. So 
y sub p or the location where the force acts is equal to the distance from the surface of the water to the centroid okay plus this and this is just what I'm gonna call a little bit okay so it's the centroid the distance from the surface to the centroid plus a little bit more so this is a little bit okay so like I mentioned to you before okay a lot of times we're gonna be ignoring this term here so I'm, let me just let's just consider this one okay let me move this over here so let's look at this term y sub c plus a little bit this term is the moment of inertia and this is going to depend on the geometry that we're dealing with that is divided by y sub c times area if you're interested in where this formula comes from you can check your text and it gives you a description of how they came about this um, this derivation so in your text the moment of inertia is given here for many different geometries so on an example problem I may give you let's say we have a triangular gate and I want you to find where the force acts if the water is up here the force would act at the centroid plus a little bit and we would calculate what that little bit is using this so the force is going to act at the centroid plus a little bit more and we'll use all these different uh, um, values here to calculate that so on this table you'll see there's a um, value for the moment of inertia and there's also the area given for each one of these shapes uh, here's just another way of calculating it this is a pressure prism if you integrate all of this it come out to be uh, giving you the resultant force so that's just another method so here uh, here's a special case so if we plug in all of the moment of inertias if we plug in all of those values um, for a rectangular plate that's submerged okay this is a special case for a rectangular plate that's submerged that means if you have a triangular plate you can't use this equation if you have a circular plate you can't use these equations you would have to use the general analysis which is finding the resultant force and then finding the location where it acts but here we are just going to describe this particular case so this takes into account the distance that this plate is submerged s plus b over 2 which is y sub c right this is going to be y sub c s plus b over 2 is y sub c plus a little bit and this is the moment of inertia for this rectangular plate and here is the um, other uh, bottom portion so here let's look at our term oops y sub c times a here we have y sub c which is s plus b over 2 and remember we'll typically ignore this times the area which is a b okay so there's different the book provides you a different because we a lot of times we deal with rectangular things right I mean a, a lot of in practice many different things are shaped in a rectangular fashion but we may you and consider some other geometries simply for um, practice and because you may actually experience some different geometries in practice yourself so if this was totally totally upright you know we would perform our analysis like this if s equals zero or if the plate is brought up all the way up to the surface we would eliminate that so it would just be rho g h uh, h sub c okay and of course here uh, it would all be the same remember the pressure is all the same along a certain distance in the horizontal direction so just rho g h Finally, I want to talk about buoyancy in fluid statics. So basically, buoyant forces are going to be forces caused by the displacement of the fluid that we're in. Okay, so really doesn't have anything to do with the actual whatever material we're putting into the fluid. Okay, 
has to do with the volume of the material that we're putting into the fluid. Okay, so it's, if this material here displaces um, one meter cubed of water, that all of that weight that it's displacing is going to be acting as an upward force pushing this to the surface or pushing it upward in the up direction, the opposite direction to this uh, weight force here, okay? So here, basically what I just said can be summarized by Archimedes' principle, and that is the buoyant force acting on the body immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body, and it acts upward through the centroid. So we'll be looking at the forces acting in the centroid of whatever body that we're dealing with. A great example of that is a hot air balloon, which you know we fill up with lighter density air so it has a weight all of this you know the material cloth the basket the people inside the basket all of that has a weight acting downward but the amount of air that we're displacing has a greater weight that's why the net force is acting upwards because we're displacing more weight of air than this entire system ways. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We'll work some practice problems here to illustrate both fluid statics and buoyant force.